video tutorial on data description in R. This time we're going to look at univariate values or univariate variables. Okay, this is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to read in this leg press training data set that I have on my desk. Uh, on my desktop here. Uh, it's located in the repository that's in the link in the description, so you can go fetch this off of the repository so that you can follow along. Okay, so this is leg press training data, and it's gonna be uh, a training regime for people, and it's gonna look at their age and how well they are able to uh, do a leg press in terms of the actual number of replications or uh, reps they can do. So first thing we're going to do is read it in. Um, notice that we have a subject, an age, a treatment, whether they got control or a treatment group. And they did three different trials at different places along the treatment. So they, they did uh, a treatment at like say a measurement at time one and then they looked to see at time two if they were any better and at time three if they were any better and so on. So what we want to do is just some basic univariate descriptions, but there's lots of data here, so we want to play with this and see what we can come up with. So the first thing we want to do is how about the mean, which is the balance point of the data. Okay, and our function here is mean, and I'm going to actually use press 1, and I'm going to say what's the average age. And I run this, and I see that the average age is 50.48. So these are not spring chickens here. So these people are a wide range of ages. And I'm actually just going to put the answer right there next to it. Why? So we can keep it around because I'm going to have several others that I'm going to look at. So I'm going to do press 1. Treatment is probably not useful. Subject is a category. So let's look at trial one and see how they were on trial one. So we can run this and we can see that on average it was 25. So I can come over here, put in the comment, 25. And then I'm just gonna copy and paste because there's no point, oh, gotta undo that. Sometimes you press the wrong button. So we're gonna copy it, we're going to paste it and we'll paste it again because there's actually several trials here. So let's look at each one individually. Uh, so I'm going to make this trial two. I'm going to run this one. And that gives me 29. So it looks like things are going up. And I can do this again for the last one, which was trial three. Run this. And this is at 38. And again, this one is higher than the previous one. So it allows us to look at where the balance points of these data are. And if we wanted to, what we can do is we can actually start to look at this from a different perspective, uh, which we'll do here in a minute, uh, or maybe in another video. So the other one is the standard deviation. That's another common one. And this is the average distance from the mean. So that's kind of how you can think about it. What is the average distance of the data from the mean? And it measures the spread. So here it's SD, and I'm actually just gonna come up here and be really, really lazy and copy all these, because I'm gonna get it for the same ones anyway. Uh, and I'm just gonna change my means to SDs all the way down through here, and then run it and see what happens to each of the values and change it. So SD, SD, SD. So if I run this one, the standard deviation on the age is 16.9, so about 17 years. So the average distance is about 17 years. So it's quite spread out. Uh, let's see how the leg presses vary. Oh, so this is much, much smaller, so 4.4. So if you look at this, they were able to uh, press on average about 25 reps with a standard deviation of 4.4. Trial two, we can see if it's anywhere near so we have 4.34, so similar number. And for the last one, we can see what that one comes up with, 5.66. So it looks like a little more variation here, uh, or a little more spread in the data on this one. And this gives us a way to measure the spread, so keep that in mind. Uh, some other common things that people want to know are like the median. The median is the middle value. 
Okay, and I'm just going to be really lazy again and copy and paste this stuff and paste it in. And the function that we're going to use is median. So median. And see it pops up in the tooltip and I'm going to keep doing this. I probably should just copy and paste it to be extra lazy. So I'm just copy that, paste it, paste it, and then we'll start running this. So the median age is 52. So we copy and paste this into our sheet up here. So 52. Uh, the, uh, the median leg press was 25, which is pretty close to the actual uh, mean if we remember back. Uh, run it for the next one for 2, 30, and for the last one, 38. So, 38 here, and we can look up here. And notice that um, these are decimals because they're averaged across multiple things or multiple observations, and you have to remember that we're dividing by a number. Here, when we're dealing with the median, if it's an odd number, we're actually pulling the actual middle value out. And these are reps, so they're actually counts of how often somebody did something. That's why they're integers. Now, if the data is an odd number, then it will be the division of two numbers, right? So it'll be the, the 40, like, ninth number, and the 50th number divided by 2, or, or whatever, however we have. We have 70 here, so the 35th and 36th number. Take those two, add them up, divide by 2, and that's what we ended up with here. All right, so uh, another thing that people are often interested in uh, is another measure, which is IQR, which is the interquartile range. And let's see uh, if the function is just built right in. So let's copy and paste this again. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Sometimes you just have to go on a wing and try it out. And my guess is the function name would be IQR. So let's see if that runs. And sure enough, it does. So IQR runs. Uh, often in our, it's probably there, you just have to know how to ask for it. And makes it really easy to do things because this is another measure of spread. So this is uh, how wide the middle 50% is. How wide the middle 50% of the data, or how wide is the middle 50% of the data? Okay, so that's how you can think of the median, or the IQR, and we can run these again. So this one was 27.75, so I'm gonna copy and paste that up here. Okay, go to the next one. And notice it's 5.75, so copy that, paste it in, and do the next one. This is just 5 directly. So not terribly different than the last one. And we'll do trial 3, and we get 8. So this is another way to measure things. Uh, another common measurement are the minimum and the maximum. So those are often quite common values to look for. So the minimum, which, which we actually already have done, and the maximum we've already done. So I'm not going to do that here. Uh, we did it in the previous videos, or several previous videos, so I'm going to omit it here. Uh, but quantiles are really important. Uh, so let me put here, quantiles are really useful. Okay, uh, and the median happens to be one of the quantiles. So let's see if it's quantile, and then we can put in whatever we're interested in. So here, let's say we're interested in press one, age. And you actually have to give it which one you want. So let's say I'm interested in the 50th percentile. And when I do that, it says 50% and it's 52. And if I come up here and look where I was before, that's actually 52 again, which, which we what we would expect it to be. So I'm going to paste this here for the moment. But often we're interested in more than just these two. Often we're interested in a vector of them. So what I can do is get the five number summary directly from here. I'm interested in zero, which happens to be the minimum, 0 0.25, which happens to be the first quartile, 0 0.5, which happens to be the median, 0 0.75, and one. 
and let's see what this spits out. And it's gonna, I'm gonna put the answer right below it just because we don't have enough space here. And you can see that it comes up with this little t tip here. It says, unmatched opening bracket, which is telling me I've missed my closing uh, parentheses. So keep that in mind that our studio will actually help you program better if you know how to listen to it. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a run here. And notice it spits out a lot of information for me. So it gives me lots of information here. So I'm going to copy and paste this in. And when I do this, I'm going to highlight here. I'm going to go up to the code menu. And you can find in here comment. And it'll just automatically comment that in for me. Uh, and I can do this for each of these that I'm interested in. So kind of... So, and we're gonna learn another trick here in just a second to make this work uh, to, well, actually it'll probably be in the next video, but we'll learn how to do this much more efficiently than what we've been doing so far. So trial one, trial two, trial three, and so on. So let's run trial one, see what numbers pop out, 14 to 33. I'm gonna copy these get a hold of it, copy it, and paste it in here, and then I'll, again, go up to code, and if you look, there's a hotkey that you can use, but I'm just going to use this so you can see that I'm doing it. So it's Shift, Command, C on a Mac. Uh, on a Windows machine, I don't remember what it is, uh, but I'm sure that if you put your tooltip on it, it'll show you how to do it. So this one goes 18 to 38. Put this in here and code comment and putting the answers in your comments is often quite wise because it actually lets you know what the values were without having to actually rerun the thing again especially if you're doing lots of summaries you can just go fetch it right out of your comments so here i've got this pop this in here comment it out and then i have all the values that i need Okay, so uh, this is not only what we're worried about here, these quantiles, which this happens to be five number summary or the quartiles. Uh, other people are interested in other quantities as well. So you may hear of deciles. So how do you come up with a decile? Well, a decile is still based off a quantile, but in this case, we're going to be interested in a different set of values. We're still going to be interested in zero, but we'll actually be interested in point one. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 1. And what this does is it breaks the data up into tenths. So I can see what the data looks like when it's broken up into tenths. So if I look here, I get 0%, 10%, 20%, 30%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 70%, and so on. And you can get an idea of where the data breaks up and how it falls out uh, versus just looking at the quartiles. But quartiles are quite common, but I just want to show you that you can get more out of this than specifically the uh, quartiles. Okay, so this has been the basic univariate description. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to try to look at some pictures of these things to really understand what we're looking at. All right, so see you in the next video.